Hi everybody, Amber here from Atomic Photography, bringing you tips and tricks on beauty, fashion and travel photography. In this week's video, I'm bringing you a Lightroom and Photoshop tutorial where I show you how to create a whimsical feel, light, bright, airy feel to your images. This can be for portraits or for beauty imagery. And let's get into the video. I've got a couple of images here. I'm going to show you how I edit one of them. I'll show you step by step how I do that. Basically start off with applying a preset that I made. I will talk to you step by step how I created the edits for this but basically I go to Atomic Ruffle and Bloom and what that's done immediately if I look at a before and after it's just brought out, made the blacks in the images lighter, it has brought the colour tone down, it's made it less sort of yellowy green tones. So let me take you through um, this side panel and show you what I mean. So I've brought down, you can see I've brought down the temperature to be cooler. I have brought down, I've made the tints uh, more sort of greenish. I have increased the exposure so you could even go a bit higher but I quite like it at about 10, 15. I've increased the contrast slightly. I have definitely brought those shadows higher so that she's not so... Um, it just helps isolate her a little bit better from her background. I have decreased the highlights so it was very very bright here and I've increased some of the black so if it, if it is too dark I've lightened the blacks again. So a lot of what I've done here is to raise where you can see all that detail has gone in that hair it's to raise that detail back out again. I increase the clarity so that it's not as soft an image and I've brought some of the colouring down so normally I'm going for highly saturated images this time I've actually brought that vibrance and the colour down. So I throw down a bit of an S uh, well not even an S curve it's more like a J curve and it's again bringing out the details in the blacks and lightening that black area a little bit. On the colour side I have played around with the saturation a little bit but I wanted sort of the greens in the background are quite vibrant on the original. I wanted to bring those down a little bit and subdue them but I wanted the pinks to really be quite pink so I've brought the red up a little bit here. That's almost all I've done apart from some sharpening as well. So you can see the before and after. It's a sharper image, it's a cooler image and it's slightly subdued but I've still retained how pink some of those pinks are. I'm going to bring that into Photoshop now. So edit in Photoshop, um, edit with your Lightroom adjustments and we'll jump into Photoshop in a second. So in Photoshop I always take a copy of my layer so I have the original and the first thing that I normally do is to liquefy um, the features of the model but actually I'm not going to do anything to her features or or to the perspective, the lens I used has not caused much distortion. So I'm gonna go straight into retouching her skin. So we've got the clone tool, we've got it at about an opacity of 45, and I'm gonna make the size a little bit bigger um, for the area we're working on. And then I'm just gonna take away some of her tiny, tiny, not even there imperfections and it's kind of you know I take a variety of you know sources you can see that I'm clicking hitting clicking hitting and you know I 
try to make sure that um, I don't get a sort of plastic fantastic feel to the image. I still want her skin to look like skin. And I kind of go through and like I said, I'll take a sample from around the area just so that I don't pick up too much of a dark spot or a too much of a light spot and cause patchy skin. This is just a matter of practice. There's no magic formula that I can really tell you about this apart from showing you how I do it. But really this comes down to a lot of practice and patience, um, looking at your before and afters. I'll always go back. It's so easy to get caught up in an image and think, yeah, I've done great here. And then you kind of go before and after and you go, oh, I went too far. But actually this one I'm quite happy with. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit and in the Lord of the Rings, Kate Blanchett had really beautiful catch lights in her eyes and when I saw the behind the scenes of the movie, they said that they had lots and lots of fairy lights on a board behind the camera which just brought out the catch lights in her eyes. I can see that there are some catch lights here. I went into the highlight tool and I've done it in the midtones, but now I'm going to do it in the highlights and this is where really it makes eye catch lights pop. So I'm just going to go and just highlight some areas that I would really like to pop in the image and just make it look like a bit like Galadriel from Lord of the Rings, how her eyes were popping in that movie and I just kind of want to naturally just catch that looks a bit hard let me bring the exposure on that down but I just want to highlight where where the light is naturally falling on her skin anyway and just pull out some of those highlights so I'm quite happy with those catch lights now the other thing that I would like to do is in real life, the model Liv, her eyes are super, super light green. I'm just going to hit the uh, shift button here so that I can highlight both her eyes with the, with the lasso tool. Now I'm going to go into layer. Um, I'm going to go new adjustment layer and I'm going to do a levels layer and what that does is just for that selection area it will create you an adjustment layer whereby I can lighten her eyes and bring out some of the, the highlights there. So I'm not going to go over the top with, with how light I take her eyes but if I was to turn that off you can see that they're dark they're light, they're dark, they're light. So it's quite subtle. I then will go into the layer mask for it and I'll highlight that, that bit, not this bit. Um, so I then go into filter, I go into blur, I go into Gaussian blur and that will just mean that there aren't harsh edges on that layer that I've just created. And 13... I might bring it down to about nine pixels, eight or nine pixels, so that it just, just doesn't give me a harsh edge. So if I take turn that off, on, off, on, you can see that there's a, a subtle difference there. So come back down again, and I think I'm just going to do a little bit more dodging, but do it not so close up to her face. Just come and highlight her cheekbones a little bit more but I don't want her to look like she was in a studio she was out in a garden so it's not going to be very harsh that's probably about it for me what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this image back into Lightroom and we are going to edit further using another set of presets to give the whimsical feel and I come to my edit so you can see a bit of a before and after that was the before this is the after and I could just leave it there 
but I'm going to use a couple of presets. Now, the presets that I use, I love pretty presets. I'll put the links down below and they have a really nice luminous collection, which is a set of different sort of light effects. So if I show you a few of them, there is confetti, creamy, rainbow, etc. So you get what I mean. And the one that I'm going to probably go to is Ball Mist. I like that one. So that then creates a really lovely, whimsical feel. It's basically a set of radial sort of gradients um, that they've created here and light effects. Now this one looks quite harsh. It's kind of coming out of nowhere. What I might do is basically edit that so I would feather that more so that it wasn't so harsh and I'd probably bring this exposure down a little bit. So you can change all the elements of presets even when you've applied them and just have a bit of a play around to see which ones you like. I'm going to go around and feather some of these a little bit more so that they're not looking like blobs of light and colour. Um, I might bring this a little bit brighter though. And so you can highlight each of these, you can change the colour on them, you could make it a little bit more transparent if you didn't want it as blue. So I'm going to just feather that out a bit more again. I'm probably going to bring that colour down a little bit. And we'll come out of that tool. Now, I want this image to be quite a bit cooler and probably a little bit lighter just to really bring some of that whimsy into that image. I'm probably going to bring the contrast down a little bit as well, just make it that bit more fairy tale. And there you have it for my edit of a whimsical image. That's the before, that's the after, and you can just see how a few simple edits in Lightroom and Photoshop can create a really pretty, whimsical, ethereal feel. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you want to see me edit any more images, or if there's any genres of images, whether it's portraits, children's photography, or travel photography, just let me know in the comments and I can bring you more tutorials in the future. Take care everybody and see you next time.